So my name is Kathy Moscou. I am currently the interim dean for the Faculty of Design at OCAD University. Um, I have been in both academia as well as uh, in creative practice for I don't want to say 25 or 30 years, a long time. <laughs> and um, I would say that the sort of the running theme through my, my work, um, as well as through the research that I conduct, as well as in the courses that I teach, is, is on social justice and equity. And so um, in my creative practice, um, I'm a mixed media visual storyteller. And um, my work is a counter narrative and interrogates what is black identity and it, it interrogates the mythologies that we have about what blackness actually means and what is the state of blackness. And so I, in my work, I often have um, elders and young people whose hair features prominently in uh, my work, um, as well as uh, symbols like cowrie, um, in order to show the historical perspectives and the knowledge transfer between generations um, of uh, and thinking about um, that knowledge transfer to black youth and the, the next generation. This particular theme really moved me, like it motivated me to create new work. Um, and it's a, sort of a new body of work for me as well, um, in that I wanted to look at data visualization as a method of communicating complex ideas. And so, um, with this work, I was very much uh, interested in looking at language loss as cultural erasure and looking at it in terms of decolonization, excuse me, colonization as a cause for language erasure. And so in this body of work, I actually uh, use databases from the an endangered language project as well as language archives in order to look globally at all the places around the world in which languages are either threatened, endangered, severely endangered, critically endangered, or have gone dormant. And so it was actually quite moving for me as a researcher, you know, in order to look and see how many languages around the world have gone dormant, um, or that there are fewer than 10 speakers globally of a particular language. And so if we understand language as embodying culture, this means that culture is also lost in those places. And it's not, uh, particular to one particular uh, country or even one particular continent because I discovered through this work is, is, is that around the world in every single continent there are thousands of uh, languages that have that are it, that are severely threatened So again, this particular work is called Erasure, and as I mentioned already, that I've used uh, language archives in order to gather the information for this work. And so what I wanted to do in this particular piece is represent each of the continents by a panel. And so in this work, there are six panels, one for each of the populated uh, continents, and they are each s approximately six yards long. And so I took the data and created patterns on fabric that are printed then onto each of these panels. And I wanted to use these patterns as sort of a metaphor of patterns of colonization in causing language a loss. And so there are uh, Oceania, Africa, um, North America, South America, Europe, and oops, <laughs> Oh, and Asia, <laughs> excuse me, as the, each of the continents which are uh, represented. And uh, again, um, I had this, um, I, I had the, the, the patterns printed on 
on cotton gauze, which was like really interesting for me because number one, it kind of cotton gauze uh, shows sort of a fluid movement, and there's a dye sublimation process which typically um, would not dye sublimation is not a process that's usually done in natural fibers, and and then that's because oftentimes you lose the vibrancy of of the color. But in this particular case, I actually wanted to show sort of this transparency, this translucentness of uh, and and this fading of color, um, and which is what was possible by choosing a natural fiber in order to print uh, the patterns on. But the other piece of this too is, is, is that in this particular piece, not only can you visually see languages that are lost, uh, representing culture that's lost, but there is an audio component to this particular, to this uh, work. And so in the language archives, I was able to find not all the languages, but some of the languages which are um, severely endangered or endangered or, or dormant even um, in the language archive. And so I created an audio track with clips of these languages. And so as you're walking, you can actually walk through the piece, so you can walk around the piece. and in the, in, Always, you'll actually be able to hear the language as well as see the language is lost. So, an example is 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 that uh, Wichita. You know, we know of Wichita as Wichita, Kansas. You know, but uh, Wichita in the in North America is a language that's actually gone dormant. And so, you can. Uh, I actually was able to find some snippets of people talking about which talking in Wichita, and interestingly enough, I mean, there's a little bit of English in there as well because there's elders who are speaking about trying to remember their grandparents as speaking this this language, and you can hear them say, "How do you say that word? Is it medicine?" You know, it's it's it, for me, it was it was fascinating. So, that, so I'm hoping that through this work, I'm ha I'm um, helping to inspire um, uh, maybe a revitalization of, of, of lost languages because in Canada specifically like one of the languages which is um, severely threatened is Seneca and it would be sad to think that years from now that our only remembrance of the Seneca language is on the name of a college. <laughs> and so all of this sort of connects to my body of work in general in thinking about um, equity and social justice and again it trying to be inspire change. Yeah. I wanted to pick, uh, for the most part, earthy tones, <laughs> and so with, with the exception of one, <laughs> and it was kind of pinkish <laughs> one, um, you have browns and greens, um, because I wanted to ground this work in, 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 in the earth um, as, as embodying, again, um, this connectedness that we have as a people to to the world around us and that we are a part of that ecology and 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 that for me resonates within this piece as well you know it's fascinating that you should ask that question because on opening night i had people yeah. who actually said that they saw their language on that piece i had people tell me that they got goosebumps when they um, visited this piece and as an artist that was like incredibly satisfying because I believe art should motivate change art should it should make you feel <laughs> you know and so for people to tell me that this piece made them feel you know um, was incredibly powerful for me as the creative I um, I had people tell me about it reinforce what I had learned in terms of languages being lost like it's hard to believe that Irish is a language that's endangered in Ireland <laughs> you know and um, and so it was quite fascinating that people you know did re recognize and I hope that other people will find um, either a, a language that they know about or have heard about in this work, and again, hoping that it will inspire them, that they will be moved like I was moved, and it, inspire them towards language revitalization. Um, what's not in this piece, but I did find some evidence of, is there are a few languages that are being that are reawakening, and maybe that's my next body of work. You know, is this is thinking about you know um, languages that are reawakening because that would be a powerful statement as well. But unfortunately, there's far more languages that are dormant than ones that are reawakening.
Yeah, but I'm really, I, I'm, I'm really thrilled, you know, that people said that this piece moves them because that was my reason for creating it. Uh, so historically, you know, uh, colonizers um, um, come into a space, you know, and one of the mechanisms by which they empower themselves is, is by depowering cultures that are existing already there. And it's evident in the fact that, let's say in, in Canada, right, is, is, is that what's what, what one of the key things about residential school was is to um, was to sanction individuals who spoke their language and to um, remove language and culture um, from out of the indigenous children similarly you know in, in my cultural background you know as a, as a black woman is that slavery was the same thing I mean purposefully they put people together who spoke who came from different regions so that they couldn't communicate with each other um, and then the aim was is to um, is to erase or to get rid of indigenous languages because again um, if you can if you are forced to communicate in the language of the your cultural dominator of, of, of your um, of, of, of the person who has come to colonize you then you are forced also to adopt the culture of that colonizer and lose your own culture in the process and certainly in the process of assimilation you know people are often are, are thinking that they will be advantaged this is in a more modern time you know that they might be at more advantage if they speak uh, the language of the dominant culture and don't speak their own language and so in 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 doing that you know when we think of people who immigrate it's just like the each with each generation there's often less and less uh, cultural awareness and cultural understanding and and in my case I have no idea anymore like what was what was my original cultural heritage or what language it was I, I that's lost to me forever and so I, I, I think that language revitalization is important in terms and there's a reason for why you know people want to revitalize languages um, that, that have been lost is, is to is to reassert sovereignty um, and, and that's really important and, and the reassertion of that sovereignty is the social justice and, and so that is uh, what I'm aiming for um, in this work and in uh, the, the other research that I, I look at in terms of, you know, how do you understand the structures of, of, of racism and in, in understanding the structures of racism, um, it's then how do we undesign racism in Canada, in the United States, globally. Yeah. Come see the work, <laughs> and, and, and I always love to hear how the piece moved you. Um, and I guess uh, hopefully this inspires you to think about um, language in a new way and its connection to culture. And so, uh, yeah, that I, I guess that's it. And. Uh, that, that, that's what I, I hope that you will be moved by this work in the same way it moved me.